Hey everybody, it's Casey Mitzel, COPE Certified Health Coach, Personal Trainer, and Co-Owner of RDFT, Results Driven Fitness. All right, so we are talking resistance training. And the most important adaptation that you have when you do resistance training is you have muscle hypertrophy, or lean body mass gain. So most people train because they want to increase their strength, or they want to increase their uh, muscle size. Now, I made a living on this in the large health clubs, but I used to walk up to people when they were using one of the machines, like the uh, thigh in and out, and I would ask that person, are you trying to get that muscle stronger, or you want to make that muscle bigger? And they would look at me just completely shocked, because they didn't want to do either. They were doing the butt hip machine because they wanted their hips and butt to be smaller. Now what we already know about muscle hypertrophy is that that's not going to be the case, especially if the nutrition isn't dialed in. But I know a lot of the people watching this are probably thinking, I don't want to bulk up. And we're not necessarily talking about bulking up, but what we're talking about here is uh, trimming down the body fat while you increase the lean body mass. Now you should already know that we can't out-exercise a poor nutrition habit. So exercise is not your solution for just fat loss in general. The amount of calories that you can consume at one time versus the amount of calories you can burn at one time and over a course of a week are extremely different. There's a big gap between them. So you're gonna to continue to uh, eat and not see the type of results that you wanna see. So if you have excess calories and additional building blocks in your nutrition, above and beyond maintenance or even creating a deficit that would allow you to tap into your, your excess calories, then what you have going on is a fat mass either maintenance or increase, while at the same time you have a stimulus that's creating muscle increase or lean body mass increase. Now, what that's gonna feel like, and for some of you, you ladies out there, you might have experienced this before, and even guys, but what happens is the muscle mass grows at a, at a faster rate than you're losing your body fat. And that's gonna push the muscle against the skin and fat, which feels tighter, so you automatically assume that you're bulking. Uh, and bulking, in, in, in most uh, layman's terms, is going to just mean that you're putting on a lot of muscle size or you're starting to look like a bodybuilder or whatever uh, negative association you have with it. But what we're really talking about is the muscle mass pressing against the, uh, the, the fat and the skin, creating kind of a larger you but a more firm you because it's tight and it's pushing against that skin. Now, the ways that we would prevent that is obviously making sure that your nutrition is in check and that you're losing body fat at the same time that you're maintaining or slightly increasing lean body mass. Now, when you have a calorie deficit or slightly less calories than what you would need in order to build a large amount of lean body mass, it's really hard for your muscle to actually build without the additional calories and building blocks that you would give it if you were purposely trying to increase weight or increase muscle mass. So a certain amount of muscle mass is always good because the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn, even at rest, and that's gonna be an important thing. Resistance training ultimately is gonna be ineffective unless your nutrition is dialed in. And for a couple of different reasons. Number one is that if you don't have the appropriate amount of fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, and the nutrients that your body needs, you're gonna have a harder time doing the amount of work that you really need to do in order to accomplish results. So the other reason why your nutrition is extremely important is for recovery. If you don't give your body the right amount of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and nutrients that it needs, then you're gonna have an inroad in your recovery, and you're gonna to continue to break down tissue without rebuilding it, and you're not gonna get stronger. In fact, you're gonna to start to create an environment of of uh, fatigue or overtraining. And the problem with that is you're gonna to start to not look forward to your workouts, you're gonna dread the days that you actually do need to come into the gym and work out, and you're gonna have more levels of fatigue, and your muscles are just not gonna respond the way that you want them to. So nutrition plays a huge factor. All right, so we talked a little bit about muscle fatigue and overtraining, and what we wanna get into now is basically how to prevent some of that. So when we talk about concurrent training, then we're talking about two different forms of activity. We're talking about resistance training and endurance. And depending on your main goal, you'll have to take a look at that and see which one you're gonna do first. So if your goal is endurance training, cardiovascular, you wanna uh, run more distance, that kind of thing, you would do those activities first or on opposite days than your resistance training. If you were to do a bunch of leg presses and squats and then try to do your normal uh, endurance running, you're gonna come up against some, some problems and some issues because of the energy systems that were used during the resistance training are gonna be, uh, a roadblock for you and your endurance. 
So same thing goes for resistance training. If your goal is to increase muscle size, um, strength, or power, or even just toning and firming and getting that muscular look that you're looking for, then you're gonna to wanna to do your resistance training first before any of your cardiovascular activity or do your cardiovascular on opposite days. So very similar to doing cardio first or weights first, we also, when we look at a resistance training program, uh, where we start is from the inside working out. And the reason why is you wouldn't want to train and fatigue the outer extremities of your body that are gonna to need to hold up the weight for your chest. Your chest being the heavier mover is gonna be assisted by those smaller muscle groups. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by training chest first and then working our way out to the shoulders and our triceps. And when we work our back first, we're gonna work our way out to the deltoids and uh, biceps. Now we can get into spot reduction on another time. That's a topic, one of my favorite topics actually to uh, defuse and debunk for people. But um, let's just basically say right now you can't spot reduce. We can't take one spot and decide that we just want the fat mass to go away from there. Uh, we can spot train. We can spot as we can take a specific area and try to increase the size of the deltoid or something like that. That's a possibility. But when we come into resistance training to lose fat, and one of the worst ones that we see is the amount of abdominal exercises that people do trying to lose their belly fat is really ridiculous. I mean, we, we talked again about nutrition being the number one factor in seeing any kind of loss of fat mass. Um, thinking that you're gonna do a smaller muscle group like the abdominals, smaller than your, your legs or your chest or back, that would be um, more beneficial to do those movements for increasing calories burned and starting to see a reduction in fat mass, we see a lot of people who just decide to do stomach exercises or abdominal exercises. So very little um, efficiency there in terms of how many calories you can burn and what the ultimate effect is gonna be for fat loss. So again, Nutrition, number one, large muscle groups when you're doing resistance training, working your way into the smaller muscle groups. Now, the two ways that you can increase your strength and your power would be by training your core, and that's all six deep muscles of, the, of your uh, surrounding core musculature, and then also grip strength, because that's gonna be a limiting factor when you get into some of your heavier weights.